Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Steam Forward podcast. And we're so excited because this is the first episode of season two. And so today, our guest is Pastor Linda Freeman, and you're going to see a conversation that we're having one of just the new year. We're going to talk about our projects that we've been doing at sites around Miami Dade, known as Three Bin Composting. We're going to talk about a little bit about student centered learning as well as biodiversity. We hope you enjoy this episode. Steam Forward Podcast. Well, welcome into season two of the Steam Forward Podcast. And I'm here with Pastor Linda. Hello, hello. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I can't believe it. Season two. Season two. We're so excited. We got the brand new pictures before we walked in here. And so we're just in awe and excitement. So let's just dive into this conversation. And Okay, but wait, but wait. Why are you wearing a shirt that says Hawaii? Well, first of all, I went to Vo- Hawaii Volcano National Park. I got to see some really cool volcanoes. What? So for my break, I don't know what you guys did, but we had the I had the privilege to go on a seven day cruise to Hawaii. <gasps> yeah, it was super exciting. I mean, I've been to Hawaii before, but not in the format of going to every single island. So um, it was really special because my mom had cancer last year. And so we go on a family trip. So we did to get to go last on somewhere last oh. year, really. So we just did something kind of bigger. So your mom must be feeling much better. Absolutely. Yes. That's so fantastic. praise the Lord for that. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. So what was your favorite island? My favorite island out of all of them. It's kind of biased, but I love Kona. Mm-hmm. I was born in Japan. I've Wait also- a minute. Is that where the coffee comes from? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's already my favorite. All right. Yes. They have okay. coffee. They have chocolate. They have everything. But I used to live in Japan and it mm-hmm. gave me very like, it, it felt almost like nostalgia, the way the oh. streets were and stuff. And it feels very native. And that's why okay. I enjoyed it a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Also, though, while I was there, um, I think about all the things we learned in summer camp about like climate change and yes. coral bleaching. And one sad thing about it was I did go snorkeling in Kona and um, the coral reefs are pretty, they're pretty dead. They're pretty. Wait, um, what, what, wait a minute. The biodiversity of the fish wait, is very low. Don't tell me that. Yes. So it was like when you talk about things and you learn about things, you're like, OK. But when you see it in person, it's like. Oh my God, they're not lying to us. It's a so real wait. Thing. You went scuba mm-hmm. to die. No snorkeling, mm-hmm. and the coral reefs were dead. Lackluster. The biodiversity was real low. Like there wasn't as many fish as you would think you would see. The colors weren't as vibrant. It was kind of sad. That's unbelievable. The ocean was beautiful, but when it's you're dead under snorkeling, you're like, okay. Now there's a whole story there. Mm-hmm. So on the surface, it all looks beautiful, but underneath, dead. Dead. And so my real life application. Wow. Wow. Yes. So that was just a little bit about uh, Hawaii. But if you ever have the privilege and the chance, go. Well, since you didn't invite me, I guess I have to plan my (laughs) own trip to Hawaii. Okay, I'll work on that. (laughs) But let's move on. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what's happening here right in town Mm -hmm. in terms of Gen 2050 STEAM module locally in Miami-Dade County? And the place I'd like you to talk to us about today is Ojas elementary absolutely so ojas elementary school uh so we were able to get funding for a year-round model right for gen 2050 and so we've been working with ojas elementary school with miss espinoza and per- the principal miss mejia dr mejia dr mejia i love her they're so fantastic and so we've been doing three bin composting so if you're not aware about what three bin composting is is it's three separate bins of compost and every bin has its own stages And basically, I always like to say there's magic in the compost because it's going to do what it has to do if you give it the right uh, factors and ingredients to make the compost work. So wait, wait, let's go back. So three bin composting, Mm -hmm. there's three bins Mm -hmm. and they're all doing the same thing? How does that work? Mm -mm. So the first bin is collecting your matter. So if you don't know much about composting, composting is uh, composed of green matter and brown matter. Okay. And so you want more brown than green. Green is basically the stuff you eat. 
But the things you want to avoid in composting is like theories and meats because it's really, really, really smelly. And so we just do like natural like fruits, vegetables, uh, green leaves, things like that. And then you mix it with your brown matter. So one thing I really love. Shout Wait, out, what's brown matter? Brown matter is going to be like uh, cardboard boxes, sticks, uh, dirt. You can use uh, soil if you want to, to kind of get it going a little quicker. Um, and so one thing I love, shout out to Miami Public Schools, whoever does the lunches for OGIS, they give them uh, these cardboard reusable tr lunch trays. No way. So that's all of our brown matter that we get to use. And so once you fill up the first bin, you flip it into the second bin. And that's so you're literally habit. taking mm -hmm. the lunch tray, mm -hmm. ripping it up. And you're putting it in the compost. Right. That's amazing. And so hopefully there's going to be a picture that pops up uh, on this video. Uh, it turns into compost. And wow. so basically we're almost at the end stages of having compost that we can put in their garden that they that we've done with them. And I've been hoping all along if we were able to have one successful mm -hmm. uh, three bin composting that we could move into worm farming. Yes. Casting the end. Yeah, I'm yeah. really looking forward to that. So I'm excited. And what's really cool is when we were playing with the compost, playing with the compost, when we were messing around with the compost at Ogis, there's a whole bunch of worms in it. Already. And the kids are like, there's worms in it. I was like, yes, leave them. They invited yeah. themselves. Yeah. Because we didn't add any. Mm -mm. When there's a whole bunch of worms in it. So it's really awesome that when you put a lot of hard work and you're teaching students not only how to be sustainable, but that you can do something that can create this beautiful project. And yes, it takes time, but the kids are like, oh my God, it's soil, it's dirt, it's compost. It's like, so when did we put in the three bin composting? Say October. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's taken from October mm -hmm. until January. Right for all three bins mm -hmm. to be flowing together. Right. That's fantastic. So I would say probably the start of February, we have our product. Okay. And then for our listeners, what would you do with the product? So the products you can do, well, what we're going to do with it is we're going to use it in the garden because we know it's 100% organic soil. We didn't put pesticides in it. We didn't put chemicals in it. We didn't put uh, meat, plastics, metal. It's purely organic soil. So when it goes on the edible vegetables that we have there, uh, they're not eating anything bad. And so mm. that's kind of the glorious part of doing your own thing and doing it the right way. Okay, so for me, uh, what I hope we can do, mm -hmm. like I mentioned, that we take some of that purified yep. product and we start our worm farm. Yes, and it'll make it even more organic. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm so excited about me that. Me too. But the other thing that um, I heard you mentioning over and over, that the students are the ones yes. that are doing the work. It's up to them. If it doesn't work, if it fails, then it's kind of, well, so one really big thing that we're, we focus on and one thing that I think that you've always had for Gen 2050 is student-centered learning. Yes. And if you don't know what student-centered learning is, that you have the kids do everything. <laughs> the lecture is important, but it comes after. And so I think that we've probably all been in situations where we just hear a teacher talk, 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 talk. But if there's no application, you don't know how to apply it to your real life or even retain the information. So when you have the students do the project, take responsibility of the project, um, I think that the outcome is always going to be greater and better and more. Um, it's going to influence them more to realize that if I want to see a change, I have to do the work. And so I think that that's really what Gen 2050 shows. Yes, I believe hands-on science learning mm -hmm. in a student-centered yeah. strategy yeah. is so, so powerful. Because as you said, the kids are doing the work mm -hmm. that they're reading about and listening to the teacher talk about, what they take a quiz on mm -hmm. and a test on, is everything they've put their hands they become a part of it. Yeah. So there, it's easier for them to talk about it. And as you mentioned with the worms, mm -hmm. you never told them to go look for worms. Mm -hmm. They were looking mm -hmm. to see what was happening with their work. Right. And they saw, they observed the worms. Right. Just like their observations now are pollinators. They're like, the bees, why are the bees here? What are the bees doing? And yes, they're scared of them, but it makes them think further as to, 
well, is the garden this luscious and green and beautiful because the bees are pollinating it? And it has them start to think like, well, maybe we need all the things that we never thought we needed before. Right, because there weren't bees in that little section not. in the courtyard area that we're able to use at Oges. And there were no bees out there at the beginning of the school year. So now they're there. Okay. So we love it. And these kids love it and they're excited about it. And um, yeah, they call me the compost queen. Oh, <laughs> I love, uh, I love the compost uh, so much. And then, um, so yeah, so we're just having a lot of fun. So where else are we doing three bin composting right now? So we have started here at Trinity at TCA. We had to, and so the other thing about it is, so sometimes the compost isn't doing what it needs to do. So we have the students think, well, what can we do to fix the problem? And so here at Trinity, our problem was it was always too wet, too soggy. So the kids were were like, well, maybe we just need to find a way to cover it so it can stay dry. And so we so we kind of do science that way, too. OK. And so uh, we have our compost here. They have the garden here. And we also started at a site in Kendall called Town Center. And that is an after school program. I believe it's from like second grade to fifth grade. And so they're starting their compost project there. And hopefully sometime this year, we will help Norlin hopefully either do the compost or help them build a Pine Rockland garden. Okay. And that's a middle school. That's a middle in school. In Miami Dade. In Miami Garden. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's really great. That's yeah. really great. So we're and doing the things. Don't forget that we had a special visitor. Yes. In the compost at Trinity Christian Academy. Who was that, Savannah? Oh, that you we called had me about. You called me about a special visitor. So uh, when we have living animals, uh, it does freak the kids out. So I'm like, Pastor Linda, we have a possum. And um, should we leave it or keep it? And so Pastor Linda really said that they're great for carpets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, I, and let me say, this is my public service announcement on behalf of all possums yes. around the world. <laughs> They do not get rabies. They, yeah. They're not able to get rabies. I know. Number one. It's Number it. two, they eat cockroaches. I did not know that until you sent me the article. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, they're <laughs> some of my best friends and we need more of them. Yes. They also eat small rodents like mice. Mm -hmm. So if you have a possum around your backyard, welcome it, greet it, say Good morning, possum. Thank you for eating the mice and the cockroaches. I love you so much. That's what we need right. to say. But the thing about possums is when they are scared, mm -hmm. they they do one of two things. They want they might play dead. Right. They fall over on their side and look like they're either in a coma mm -hmm. or dead. Mm -hmm. Or if they're backed into a corner. They'll make a hissing sound and they'll show all their teeth. Yeah. But that's just a show. They're not fighters. They're lovers, yeah. not fighters. So you know, if you see a possum, just encourage them. <laughs> Can't encourage the them. Good we word love you. Out in your backyard. Speaking of encouragement, <laughs> uh, Dr. Lisa was uh, telling the students to sing to the plants. Yes. And so she had uh, she sent the video of the kids singing to the plants. And she goes, I'm not going to say the garden is this beautiful because <laughs> they were singing. But it's a yeah. possibility. Yeah. So. Well, that's the other thing yeah. I love about what we're doing uh, this school year is it's bringing kids joy. Yes. And I've noticed on their faces, they're so excited to be outside. Mm -hmm. They're excited to be with each other and watch their work come to life mm -hmm. that it makes it all worth it yeah when they say i did this yes they exactly. get super excited exactly. and just thank you pastor Linda, so much for the privilege and the opportunity you know i love science and i love teaching and so just being able to get my feet wet and get dirty with the kids and uh, just learning new things every day has been the most amazing experience you are so welcome <laughs> thank you it's exciting to me too I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I know we're going to see your face again. You will. <laughs> and, oh, we almost forgot. What did we forget? Do you got your word of the day? <laughs> <laughs> My word of the day is probably two words. I'm going to say two words. Continuous learning. Yes. Continuous learning. That you're never too old to learn something new. <laughs> And you never know enough. Right. Like there's always more to learn. Absolutely. So that's my word of the day. Keep learning. Keep on learning. Keep when you've heard learning. that, keep 
on learning. Well, that's the end of this podcast. Thank you so much again, Pastor You're Linda, welcome. for joining us. All right. See you next time. Next time. And as always, a special thanks to our sponsors, the Children's Trust and Trinity Church. And don't forget that there are three ways in which you can listen or watch this podcast. If you'd like to listen, follow us on Apple or Spotify. If you'd like to watch, follow us on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and click that bell for post notifications. Steam Forward Podcast.